Hi, I'm Mark and welcome to a very special episode of the Service Design Show. This episode is fully dedicated to in-house service design. You're going to hear about some very specific challenges in-house service designers face, but also get some very practical advice on how you can be more successful when you're embedded as a service designer within an organization. But I think the stories that you'll hear will also be very useful, even if you are not currently working in-house. Here's a brief background to this episode. There's no denying that service design in-house is growing rapidly. More and more organizations are building in-house service design capabilities, building in-house service design teams, but in doing service design in-house is different than working for an agency or a consultancy. For one, you usually don't have a lot of peers around you who you can share stories and struggles with. And often you don't have a very good benchmark to see if you're doing things right. While the rest of the organization is looking to you as the expert. The past few weeks, I hosted a new round of the service design campfire. The campfire is a private group where in-house service designers get together, connect with their peers and exchange stories. I'm really excited because we've just finished the third edition of the campfire. And in this episode, you're going to hear the stories from the eight participants. They're all in-house service designers from very different industries, teams, organizations, and countries. And they're all going to share with you the challenges they face and give you some practical advice on how you can be more successful. If the campfire sounds like something that you might also be interested in joining, I have good news for you because the application process for the upcoming round has just been opened. If you want to learn more about that, head over to servicedesignshow.com slash campfire and read the instructions carefully because we just have eight places at eight spots available in the campfire and there is a quite strict application process the sooner you send in your application the bigger your chance of getting it now i'm going to introduce you to the eight in-house service design professionals who will share their stories with you sit back relax and let the show begin welcome to the show everyone hi mark how are you doing doing well I, I am happy that everybody's here from this campfire season number three. Um, and this is our final episode and we're going to reflect on what happened in the last few weeks, some of the learnings, um, some advice maybe for people who didn't get the opportunity to join the campfires. Um, let's just kick off. Um, let's start with the first camper as we came to learn to know you all. Um, and that is Dee. Dee, could you uh, start by saying who you are and how you got into the campfire? What made you interested to join? Sure. Um, so Dee Siever, I'm a senior service designer and experience lead at Philips Experience Design, which is part of Philips. Um, what brought me to the campfire, I will say in hindsight, is actually different than what I originally came for. Um, in hindsight, I think I was really looking for evidence of what an in-house experience is, as a lot of the service design professional industry tends to take a consulting and a sort of an external design perspective. Um, so in hindsight, I think I was just looking for others like me. <laughs> yeah, and I hope you found them. <laughs> Indeed, or, yes. Others like you, but still the same. Um, <laughs> What do you feel is a typical challenge that in-house service designers face? Yeah, I think one of the things, especially when we were talking in this campfire, is um, sometimes uh, the challenge of having your design colleagues actually understand what you do um, as much as having your business colleagues understand what you do. Um, so particularly in, say, UX or communication design mature organizations, um, there's a lot of, well, what do you do as a service designer that you have to explain and, and um, educate your design colleagues on? Mm. I guess some people uh, who might be listening hope that as an in-house service designer, you're sort of freed from that responsibility and that people embrace you and uh, know what you need, know what value you bring, but that still is, uh, is very much uh, part of your job. So. If you could give one piece of advice to the people listening, uh, 
in making the life of an in-house service designer easier? What would your advice be? Um, my biggest advice would be really taking an asset-based development approach. So finding what the teams you're working with already have kind of from a service design perspective and then looking to build on that. So you're not necessarily starting from zero, but you're also not trying to get to um, 100% from the first go of working with them. Hmm. Hmm. Makes a lot of sense. Now, the final question uh, for you in, in this campfire, what do you think you'll remember in a year time from this experience? Um, I think one of the biggest things that I really took away was how much I already have at my disposal to solve my challenges. Um, really, the the camper, the other campers were able to kind of reflect my own experiences and and remind me of things that I'd already done. Um, but then I think on the flip side, you know, going back to why I originally did the campfire of looking for others who have similar experiences. I think I've ended up with a lot more um, humility and appreciation for how much other great in-house work is happening, um, which I've been a little skeptical of. Um, so I think, you know, I've been really impressed by how quickly in just four sessions we were able to build a community and find both our, our shared experiences as well as the um, offering that we can provide to each other. Mm. And I have to thank you because you're a professional camper and uh, we, <laughs> we borrowed a lot of uh, camping slang uh, from you. So uh, thank you, Dee, for that. Uh, I'll remember you for that for sure. <laughs> um, <clears throat> let's move on to the second camper in this campfire, which, which is who is Patrick. Patrick, could you uh, Briefly tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do, and what brought you you to this campfire. Yeah, hi. Uh, I'm a head of experience design at a large insurance company here in the U.S. And uh, actually, a coworker introduced me to uh, your show and to to this campfire. And I thought thought it was a great idea to meet with other service designers um, and uh, share experiences. Hmm. And uh, I, the the previous the colleague was also part of the previous campfire, so it's uh, the passing on the baton. Exactly. What you, yeah. What do you feel is a typical challenge for an in-house service designer? I think because service design uh, touches so many different parts of an organization, uh, it is easy to accidentally step on toes. Um, and it's also important to be able to educate other uh, parts of the organization around what service design is, because they may not know where it starts, where it ends. And uh, there might be also a bit of a tension uh, between getting things done quickly and getting them done right. Mm hmm. I think a lot of people will recognize that stepping on toes, where are the boundaries of service design, services, service design is so holistic, uh, who, whose responsibility is it anyway? Um, is your piece of advice linked to this or are we heading in a different direction? What would you, <laughs> what kind of advice would you give to somebody? Well, I think it's uh, connected in some way, right? Uh, change takes time. Uh, especially in larger organizations, uh, especially in organizations that maybe are not as uh, ingrained in terms of customer centricity. Uh, so you kind of have to have a bit of a patience. And also um, you have to find a good balance between uh, getting some quick wins to kind of show your value and uh, working on the, the bigger issues, they're oftentimes systemic, uh, which makes it really difficult and it makes it take time uh, to, to solve. Uh, patience is a word that we've heard a lot uh, in this campfire. Yeah. Um, how do you actually do that? How do you come up with the patience? How do, how do you personally do it? Um, well, <laughs> 
the question is, do I do it? Mm. Uh, and some of my coworkers would say that I don't. <laughs> so uh, I may be the wrong person to it's, it's the piece uh, provide of advice that advice. For yourself. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, you know, it, it's around, a lot of it is around education, right? Uh, people don't know what they don't know. So you kind of have to uh, help them kind of on that journey that we're all on together. And, um, you know, when you get smaller wins, you celebrate those and uh, you just keep uh, uh, keep chipping away at it, I would say. Mm. This is a very good point because I think we uh, tend to overlook the small wins that we, that we do find as a service designer. Uh, we take those for granted, but it's really smart to actually uh, put them on a stage and celebrate them. You heard seven other stories uh, in the last few weeks. What is your biggest learning from this next to being patient? <laughs> well, I think uh, the interesting thing is that we're all, no matter where we are in the world, we have folks from Europe, from, from the US, no matter where we are, we have really the same challenges. Uh, and uh, it's very relatable uh, what other folks are going through. So I would say that that is an insight, you know, it's uh, the same problems that, that we have, the same challenges, and, and we can really learn from each other. And uh, it's nice just to listen to each other, actually. And uh, it's a bit of a therapy session, isn't it? A therapy. Yeah, yeah. Anonymous service designers, uh, a little less anonymous. <laughs> and, and this is, I think, a very important thing, because when you're at an agency, you have other peers around you to share your successes and frustrations with when you're in-house you're usually part of a small team pioneering and then it's very hard to gauge uh how well you're doing and it's hard to find the benchmark so uh, i think these sessions are really helpful for that also the question to you patrick what do you think you'll remember from this campfire in a year time well, I remember how everyone was so generous with their time, so helpful, uh, listening, and uh, and willing to share their experiences. So I, I think that's I will always remember you all. That's what happens at the campfire, at the at, at a good campfire, at least. Thanks uh, so much, Patrick. Um, I'm moving on to the next camper. Uh, who is Cecile? Hi, Cecile. Hello. Who are you for the people who don't know who you are? Yeah, so I'm uh, Cecilia, work as a service design manager for Visma, which is a big software company uh, based in uh, Oslo, Norway. Cool. And what brought you to the campfire? Uh, well, I was listening to one of your previous campfires, which uh, really uh, got me inspired that I should try and apply for this. And, uh, and uh, really wanted to just meet some other in-house service designers and just to understand, you know, a bit about uh, what I'm doing. Is that similar to what other people are doing? Are other people having the same challenges uh, as I do? So I really just wanted to speak to someone and reach out to other people within the same community just to, uh, I guess, learn and, uh, and share stories. Do you remember if there was something specific in that uh, previous Campfire Reflection podcast that made you think, I, I need to be part of this? I think a lot of what they said, just like the challenges that they had was just like, I really, I really felt the same challenges. So that's why I wanted to be part of it, mm. just because I thought that it sounds like we're all dealing with a lot of the same problems. And, uh, and it'd be great to speak to some other people than, uh, you know, the business and the stakeholders that you usually deal with. Mm. And, and speaking about challenges, what do you feel as a typical challenge for in-house service designers? Well, I think just the understanding of, of what service design is and, and how we can benefit the business and uh, the work that's involved with doing service design and uh, how to measure service design. Uh, so many of those challenges are just uh, something that we've talked a lot about and that I also heard in, in the previous uh, campfires um, that I think a lot of people are struggling with and, and trying to find their best way forward. Yeah, and it's easier when you have seven other people trying to help you get forward rather than uh, having to figure this out all on your own or within your 
context of uh, of a single company. Mm. Knowing what you know now, what would your piece of advice be for in-house for an in-house service designer or a service design team? Uh, well, I think a lot of what uh, Patrick touched upon this thing about you know taking small steps, uh, celebrating small wins, and and maybe if you find parts of the business or the organization who sort of adopt to your way of working and want to work with you, then work with them. Don't sort of spend a lot of time trying to get into places where they're not as interested. So try and work with the people who are open to working with you and then maybe create some really good success stories from that and use that as a basis to uh, broaden your scope and where, where in the organization you work. So, mm. you know, don't, don't forget the good parts of, uh, of what we are doing well and, and the good feedback and, and let that sort of help you to move forward. Yeah, and there are people who already understand, see the value, appreciate your contribution. And it's very tempting to sort of get into the eventual evangelizing mode and try to convert everybody. Um, mm. But maybe it's easier to sort of first focus on the on the believers already. Um, what is your biggest takeaway or learning from these sessions? Uh, I think that uh, many of us are in the same boat. <laughs> uh, we feel the same pains and we have the same issues. And just knowing that I'm not on my own, I think it's been a, <laughs> a great comfort uh, to me. Uh, and also that, um, w you know, at least I felt like we are doing a lot of good things already, or I'm doing a lot of good things where I am and uh, not forgetting that. So, we have challenges, yes, but let's not forget that we're doing a lot of the mm. right things as well. So that's been a big learning to just, I guess, like trust what you're doing is is right and keep going with uh, with that. Yeah, that's, I guess, the, the a little bit of the part of validation that you sort of want to know that I'm heading in the right direction, having other professionals who are in a similar situation sort of, uh, yeah just saying to you i think you're doing pretty well uh, because otherwise you might just focus a little bit too much on the things that are aren't working what will you remember from these sessions from this campfire experience well i thought uh, it was really great to meet some uh, some new people from all over the world i thought that was really cool that we're sitting here in uh, in totally different ends of the world and and having the same issues in the same talk so Definitely, uh, that will be my uh, my biggest memory, um, mm. and also that uh, hopefully we can reach out to each other after this uh, session. Uh, yeah, it's not over. Yeah. Talk. yeah, <laughs> it's not over. That's for sure. Thank you, Cecile. Um, I'm going to <laughs> hand the uh, talking stick to our next camper, who is Natalie. Hi, Natalie. Hey, Mark. How's it going? Awesome. Uh, good to see you. For the people who haven't Googled you yet, uh, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. My name is Natalie Kuhn, and I work for a financial institution within the United States. I'm also co-founder of the Service Design Network New York chapter. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, good to have somebody from the Service Design Network chapters community also in the campfires. I'm really curious. What brought you to our campsite? To learn. I would want to say I'll echo a lot of what's been shared so far, really to learn from others, share anything that I can help others learn from, um, and just understand how service design is being practiced, applied, successes, failures across other organizations. I love the component of it being across the world really in understanding the trends that we can see in, in different places as well. And again, to echo what others have said, there are a lot of similarities and then some differences too. It sounds um, when we when I listen to you during the campfires, like you're in an organization which is uh, quite mature when it comes to de design maturity. What do you still feel are some typical challenges that you encounter in that kind of context? I think for us, and I, I appreciate that I actually have reflected and seen that we are rather mature within my organization. And I would say that 
there's still challenges around number of service designers. Although we have a huge design arm of the organization, they're not all service designers, not that they all should be, but it's it's such a mix of different backgrounds from a design perspective that we are consistently understaffed from a service design perspective. So I think the, the bandwidth that we have to really practice service design at scale is still could be improved. And then additionally, I think a alignment with the business and what we're prioritizing is the most important when you think of that service design mindset and looking across to breaking down silos there's a lot of heavy lifting that has to happen to do that and so to do that heavy lifting we have to have alignment with the business and we don't always prioritize the same things hmm. so that can be a challenge at times hmm. it's really interesting uh, because what i've seen throughout these campfires is that it seems that there is like a tipping point within organizations where at first you have to you're just happy that you get one internal stakeholder to do a project with you and then sort of it starts to spread like like wildfire and then the next challenge becomes which projects am i going to say no to because there aren't enough service designers around to take on all the work so um and it goes really fast there it, it seems to be like that there's really a tipping point your piece of advice uh, anything you could tell an in-house service designer who wants to be more successful sure patience uh, <laughs> plus one to what everyone has said i think that it's really also plus one to the the small wins i think what i'll add to that of really finding ways to get in the door and show value immediately with service design is switching the conversation from telling to really showing the value of what you can contribute as a service designer. So if you can find ways to get in the door and immediately start using some of the tools to whatever capacity to really indicate service design is something we should be doing. Sometimes I don't necessarily try to do a, a whole education on what service design is. I just start using the tools and the team starts understanding that I as an individual have some tools and then slowly they learn, oh, those are service design tools because she's a service designer and it starts to click and then there's a little bit more demand but i would say try to see how you can integrate the tools right away any of the methods any of the the thinking and, and mindsets from service design try to just get those uh going and, and being used by teams and then maybe a, a retrospective of of what are these tools mm. so maybe a backwards way of approaching it when i started i was very much like let's put everyone in a class and teach them and if they can't apply the tools right away they won't get to see the value right away and you won't have that lasting bond and trust with with business partners i guess going through the experience or part of the experience is probably the most powerful way to convey the value of service design uh, and of our approach i uh, i totally echo that what is your biggest learning from these uh seven or eight stories that we've heard it's tough to pick just one. I think that to see the the themes across individuals that felt very relatable, feeling like finding that that larger community. Um, I would say the the biggest learning is is really how we're all in a very similar place. I know that that echoes a little bit of, of what other folks have said, but we're not far off from one another, even given our different locations, our different industries, the different maturity of service design within the company. And so I think it's it's just been eye-opening to see that wherever I think I am, it's, it's very similar to others and, and we all have slight differences, but there are a lot of really big themes across uh, what we're doing. What was your expectation when going in into this? I I guess I really just hope to find a larger community. I think that the service design community is is very large and, and they like doing things like this. And I love that about the service design group, um, just as a, as a practice of individuals. And I think um, for me, it's I'm just reminded I got excited about the community and then I forgot the question. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, I, yeah. yeah, yeah, go ahead. I, I, I was curious what your expectation was when getting into this. Yeah. 
Yeah, sure. I guess uh, for me, I just wanted to, to talk to people. I didn't really have an expectation of what I would learn. No idea where like my organization might fall within this evolution or maturity of practicing service design. So really, it was just like, I expect to talk to some people, hopefully they're friendly people. <laughs> and that was that was pretty much it. Hmm. And is that the thing you'll remember from the campfire? Or will there something or is there something else that stuck with you? I would think each individual story has really stuck with me trying to think if there's anything else to add. I, I kind of started saying it in the, the last response of just how incredible I think it is that we will spend time on a Monday or you know, weekends and, and really sharing our stories with one another, the commitment that uh, we have to growing our individual practices, but also coming together as a community to share and grow as a, a larger group. And I, I love that. And I that's something I take away from this is the, the commitment to ourselves, but also to the larger community to grow. Yeah, I love that you stress that because I think it's so important to um, reward yourself with the time to do some reflection, some critical thinking, some questioning. Uh, usually when you're in an environment where you're only chasing goals and deliverables and deadlines, it can be really tough to find that time. So uh, yeah, congratulations to all of you to, to putting yourself first and finding this this time. Thank you, Natalie, uh, for sharing this. And I'm going to pass the talking stick to our next camper, who is Gabby. Hi, Gabby. Hi, Rock. How are you? I'm doing very well. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what brought you to the campsite? Yes, of course. So I'm Gabriela Machado. I work as a global service designer at a luxury e-commerce platform based in Europe. And actually, my main motivation to join the campfire was my interest and curiosity about the challenges, uh, responsibilities uh, of in-house service designers like me. Hmm. And uh, service designers like you, in-house service designers like you, what are some typical challenges they run into? So I think I already heard a lot of them, but... I think one thing that took across all the, all, almost all the challenges is the how hard it is to prove the value of what we do very so in a fast uh, way, let's say. Uh, so value to stakeholders, either in the business side or even designers themselves. And I think one aspect that also um, caught my attention, let's say, is the change management work that accompanies the, uh, every service design project. So I think this is something uh, we should talk more about as a community. Hmm. The change management aspect. Yeah, that's a really good point. Um, with regards to advice, maybe uh, it, the piece of advice, is that something that you'd also have uh liked to know before you got into service design or when you got started it uh, with it like the piece of advice that you're going to give us right now yeah so it was something that i applied actually so uh once if you're looking for a job in service design you're not in a company applying it as well uh, already but actually looking for it I think it's to understand the maturity level of the company not only uh, towards design but as towards service design itself, because in my perspective, it is very different if you are a team of one or if you sit within a, a large team of service designers. And it really helps you to understand your responsibilities, the impact, the tasks, everything that you're going to face within that organization. Yeah, yeah. So be a little bit, do some research, do some digging yeah. and uh, uh, understand. Ask questions. Ask questions, a lot of them to, to basically gauge uh the type of work that you're going need to do because uh you have to do different work if you are a team of one or just a small service design team versus getting into a, a service design machine almost what is your biggest learning from these campfire sessions so my biggest learning i think is the same as everyone is that there is a bigger community and it actually yeah, the learning. Uh, we are part of a bigger community, and it's really amazing how 
even within different organizations, with, within different working dynamics and cultures, we all face the same challenges uh, or sim very similar ones. So this is my biggest learning that mm. we're not alone. <laughs> that we're not alone. Yeah, no, we're a huge community. And uh, I'm often surprised that um, it has to come out through ways like this. But uh, what I've experienced through the service design show that service design is a global phenomenon nowadays. What is the thing that you'll remember from this experience uh, after your year? So I don't want to be repetitive, but the people for sure. So I think it's really amazing how much we can observe and also absorb from only 90 minutes per week from each other. So we are very different and we all have similarities in, in a way. And I think we, we this allows us to learn a lot from each other. So I look forward to follow your future adventures in camping and working. So the people, yes. The people, yeah. Um, thanks, thanks, Gabi. Uh, and Thank I'm you. sure this won't be the end of our conversation here. Um, but we're going to move on to the next camper who's sitting and waiting uh, to share their story. And that is Hedda in this case, Hedda. Hey. Hey. Who are you? Uh, yes, um, I'm Hedda Seller. I am a senior service designer at the digital healthcare provider Kri in Sweden. In Sweden. But I'm based in Sweden. But yeah. we're available in Europe too. <laughs> what brought you to our lovely campfire site? Uh, yes, definitely a lovely campfire site. Um, yeah, so I'm uh, one out of two service designers in my organization. I've been the only one for uh, until just recently. And I would say that the main reason to come here, just as other people said, is to um, like have a context to share and talk about uh, challenges in with like-minded people. Um, so and people outside maybe my immediate bubble of other service designer that like old co-workers and stuff to see uh to get some fresh eyes uh on things hmm. and do you feel that you got did you find what you were looking for yes indeed i did okay. <laughs> happy to hear that um so you're a team of two nowadays um that's a different context than some of the other uh, campers what do you feel is a typical challenge for a team of two uh, in house yeah. service designers? <laughs> yeah, it's definitely to to get the traction of, of the service design perspective, right? So uh, the organization that I work with is a very product centered organization. Uh, we are like a scale up um, company. So very fast moving, very product focused, uh, being the only one um, have been tricky in the way, I guess, to um, to find to find leverage and to make sure that we have the more holistic perspective um, and not thinking on individual touch points, but really the whole journey. For example, um, as I also talked about in my story, uh, the thing that uh, more organizations also seem to love, which we call quick wins or MVPs, uh, and how to move away from. From that, uh, which I think is the core of uh, of service design work as well, to be more holistic. Yeah, yeah, and we've had uh, many service designers who are in a product oriented context, and that's a super challenging environment because, like, product is driving uh, everything. Uh, like, it needs to be released, features, um, and then trying to design the. Uh, holistic experience that's that's tough so uh yeah, yeah i can imagine that uh being in a campfire like this is uh is helpful but i so, also think that like the best is when uh product and service goes together right it, so having uh quick releases but also having the holistic perspective so yeah. if if i manage to have that that those two uh i think that's a, a pure success yeah i think your role as a service designer should be to help the product people make more informed, better and smarter decisions. And uh, I think that's a very, very important role. What would your, uh, did I ask you for the piece of advice? I lost track. No, did you I? didn't. No. Uh, happy well, to share. <laughs> yeah, let's go. What's your piece of advice? Yeah. Um, I would say 
manage your stakeholders closely, uh, understand them and like find them in your organization to see like who you need to collaborate with uh, and who you need to, who needs to stay informed and so on. Uh, and also to remember to like, uh, it was mentioned before, but like ask questions, look as much or maybe even more that as you look external, you should look internal uh, to understand like the whole structure um, and how things work internally. Of course, then to marry that together with the uh, customer perspective. And do you have a 30 second tip on how to manage your stakeholders, how to keep them closely? How would you do that? I mean, when I first started, I did this uh, stakeholder map with like understanding who was important for me. And then I mean, now I don't keep it updated on paper as much, but it's more like in my head to remember like who are the important stakeholders within different areas and so on. And also, as I said before, like a fast moving company, it changes a lot over time. So I think like when you've been in a place for for a while, you can understand like how to navigate. Um, yeah, in that, in that map, map the system, right? That's exactly. uh, and, yeah. That's what we do. That, yeah, um, absolutely. So, uh, what is your biggest learning from this experience? Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna plus one what's already been said, but uh, that we had so I will have such uh, similar challenges, regardless of uh, country or company and where we sit in the organization. It seems like we we have similar challenges. Um, it's been really, really great to reflect on that um, and like ha spend time on thinking on like how service design is structured and how it can uh, can be improved. That it's maybe not only about like where you sit, but how you how you do it. And do you feel that uh, people who might be listening right now uh, and are a team of one might be uh, in doubt if the campfire is something for them? Like they might be thinking, I need to have years of experience. How do you feel about it now having gone through this? If it's worth doing it. Yeah, if you're a team <laughs> of one. Yeah, definitely. I mean, especially if you're a team of one or two, uh, because then this is a perfect way to to expand that team for, for a couple of weeks. Yeah, you're getting external colleagues uh, exactly. for, for a few weeks. What will you remember, Hedda, from this campfire in a year time? Uh, the openness and honesty and how we like from like the first uh, sharing ses session had great discussions. Um, and also, um, I would say that I learned how popular Oakley is uh, around Europe when we had this uh, check-in exercise <laughs> showing each other's bridges. There were Oakley everywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, those are the fun things that we also try to share during the campfires. It's not purely professional, but we also want to learn the human behind the service designer. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Thank you for sharing. And uh, Thank you. I'm going to pass on the talking stick to Yefta in this case. Are you there, Yefta? Yes. Hi, Mark. Hi. Can I'm, you tell us a little bit about yourself? A little bit. I'm, um, uh, I'm working as a consultant for an IT and consultancy firm. And currently I'm on an assignment for a big bank where I'm coaching, um, I think six teams now who are trying to come up with new services and do the whole service design process and it, which is lovely, but it was the first time for me to be like, in house and therefore, um, these campfire sessions, they were a perfect addition for me to reflect on what I'm doing there and how I can do it maybe better. So why did you feel you needed to sign up? What made this an attractive offer to join the campfire? Yeah, it's, it's partly um, just talking with like-minded people like the other set, but also especially the international perspective, because as a consultant, I've seen a lot of Dutch companies from the inside and I well learned a lot from them as well, but I figured it's good to see also uh, other places in the world how they're doing it and looking in hindsight it's also the different team sizes and dynamics they're they're more diverse than what i current what i usually see so that's uh, we we uh 
we hear a, a phone, a bleep. This is what happens. This is reality. Yeah. Is it me? No, I'm not sure. I think so. Um, so being an in-house service designer brought in or coming from a consultancy, what have you found to be a typical challenge? Yeah, I mean, a typical typical challenge is, I think some of you, at least Natalie and Hedda, you touched upon it, you like start small and, and that's like a natural thing to do, start small with quick wins. And, but, a, but a challenge is to transform it from starting small and, and showing these quick wins to do more fundamental things. And they sometimes, they, or actually often, they don't show, show the quick win right away it takes months or sometimes years to invest in to these transformations so um i consider that a big challenge yeah so how do you move beyond the quick wins and uh how do you get the opportunity to actually make bigger wins that's definitely a challenge that i've seen as well any piece of advice around that well i think from the the talks we had what stick to me was saying we are the problem solvers we're we're there we're asked by people to come and solve something they ask us to be there so if you keep focus on this problem um which is sometimes a small problem but also could be a bigger more fundamental problem then it creates space to also work on that yeah yeah so keep in mind that you're there for a reason <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Um, your learning from these last few weeks, what would you say? Yeah, I, I think it's about, I, I had a Pilates teacher and she always said to me, consistency is the key. And it's a, a sort of, I always believe like flexibility is crucial to find your way in an organization. But at some point, consistency is the key that mm. you really have to, stick to the process that you you're there to present and and use the methods that we as a community have provided for us um, so sometimes you just have to to stick to that and keep doing that uh, and also combine it with what patrick mentioned a little bit of patience um, and it will will get you much further than I, being flexible all the time jumping from one do thing you, to do you have a um a compass or a guiding star when to be consistent? Like, how would we know? How would we know? Well, for me, it's about sharing the things that I do with others and that discussing how we approach it, that makes it that I am consistent because I'm sharing it. It's not just me, but it's something with a group of people. That That's something that helps helps maybe even better than than agreeing on a on a book or a framework or just aligning with other people keeps you consistent hmm. and making re repeating your story sometimes i feel that we as service designers are really in love with doing new things and want to move on but uh yeah like like it has been mentioned in this uh session already patience and i think repeating ourselves a lot uh, is needed to get the message to to stick and come across and at some point uh, create momentum what is the thing that you'll remember in a year time from these sessions you have mm. yeah i think it's i mean we learn a lot from each other as, as the others already stated but um i think it's mostly that we can also learn a lot from ourselves because um, in contradiction to most meetings online, uh, in the campfire sessions, you have like 10, 15 minutes to just talk without anybody responding or interfering. Or um, And I felt like this dynamic of just talking, preparing a talk, talking, and then have an audience asking you some questions on your thoughts and, and reflection on it. That's really valuable. And actually, I think we all sort of know the answers or at least a way that we can move forward with the things we struggle with but we don't take the time to reflect on it so i think that's something i keep uh, mm. I, I will memorize mm. 
Yeah, sometimes you just have to say out loud the things you're facing, the challenges that you're facing, and the problem might uh, be gone by just verbalizing it. Mm -hmm. And I think it's it's a it's a conscious um, activity. You really have to put the time and effort into into verbalizing that. Um, thank you. And uh, we're going to continue to the final camper at this campfire site, and that is. Nada, are you there? No? Yeah, I'm yes. there and I'm muted. <laughs> yes, very good. Happy to see you. Can you share a little bit about yourself and how you got into the campfire? Sure. Uh, so I'm Nata Kostenko, a service designer. And in 2020, I worked for Flavio. It's an e-commerce email marketing agency. I worked as the only service designer in the company, which is based in the US, and uh, I live in Estonia. So there is like zero organized local community, no meetups for service design. And um, I felt like my online interactions uh, with other service designers were quite limited. So I decided to explore another world of like masterminds and, you know, talking about the service design challenges. And um, I was curious if it's just me facing some issues in the projects and uh, see what is normal. Yeah, and like you're really pioneering. I know that everybody as a service designer feels like they're pioneering, but doing this like without a local community, without an established practice around you, that's, uh, yeah, that that requires some perseverance and, uh, uh, belief in it so awesome that you're doing that now in your situation what uh, would you say was a typical challenge for an in-house service designer okay so the one that i uh, posed like during our conversation was is that um, i faced is, like how to integrate ethical design into everyday work so some decisions they might um, make sense from the profit side but so they aren't usually even questioned uh, but then, like, we're advocating for the user and sustainable development of the company, right? It's impossible without this emphasis on ethics. So my challenge, like, was around the topic of um, how to have this conversation in the company and how to approach eliminating dark patterns and so on. Yeah, the trade-offs there. Even The question is if they are trade-offs even. Um, what kind of advice would you give to an in-house service designer? Is it related to ethics in design or is your advice something else i think i'd rather have a universal advice so what i found is that it's important uh, to position yourself in the company kind of in the right way from early on and if you don't then work on this as soon as possible like think of what kind of like brand you'd like to have in the organization and then work around this because like in the consultancy business right people might check uh, like feedback for your work or your portfolio but inside the company in-house the words like it spreads in a different way and uh, then your image like the brand that you built then helps you to sell uh, service design and what kind of uh, what kind of image now in hindsight do you think is a smart image to build or i don't know how to actually phrase that but let's say you start out as a service designer in a fresh new company what do you think would be a smart approach at least for me, it's important to establish yourself as an expert so that people know that, you know, they can come to you, but not say that I have all the answers because you don't. You have all the questions, but you don't have all the answers. So kind of balance on this part. And I think Yepta also pointed out an interesting part about branding of service designers. It's like, you know, be those quirky, sometimes crazy guys, you know, that people know, oh, there is something interesting going on there. So they're even naturally drawn to discover what's up there. And, mm. you know, and then you kind of work with this interest. Yeah, and I think it's a really good point that it, sometimes um, we need to show a little bit more of who we are and what we bring to the table. I know... Uh, a lot of service designers uh, are quite humble and quite modest about what they do and the value they bring, which is a, a great um, attitude. But we, you are bringing value and it's okay to help other people understand what that value is without becoming uh, an asshole. So uh, yeah, it's good to explain that. 
Now, what would you say is your learning from these stories that you've heard over the last few weeks? Okay, so I um, decided to take away not only an insight, but also a question. So I'll be asking myself more often, uh, what did previously work in a similar situation? Because I know it's like very tempting to go after the next shiny thing, approach or tool. Uh, but we really have, like we all have wisdom and from the past lessons available to us. So definitely that's something I'll be capitalizing on more. Mm. And is that also the thing you'll remember in a year time or is there a different memory that you think you'll recall? Oh, there is more. Um, so first, um, I was very pleasantly surprised how openly and honestly like people shared. So the whole atmosphere of the campfire, I definitely remember that. Uh, but then is that um, building capabilities is more important than fixing the bugs. I think we all talked about this, you know, that a lot revolves around the culture of the organization and that we as service designers are in position to build it, to develop this. So definitely like this empowering message, you know, like, yes, you can would be something I'll remember. If you want to be part of the next campfire group, here is what you need to do. Head over to servicedesignshow.com slash campfire, read the instructions carefully on how to apply. The next campfire group is starting on March 10th, 2021. We've just got space for eight participants in this campfire. So if you want to increase your chance of getting in, make sure you send in your application right after this episode. So head over to servicedesignshow.com slash campfire and read all the instructions there. I really hope you enjoyed the stories and got something useful out of it, even if you're not an in-house service designer. Thanks so much for listening. Keep making them positive and I'll catch you in the next episode.